is Van Cam. This is Van Cam. You waited for. No, Steve. Just see blue. That's I told you, dickhead. I'm gonna see through a can. <laughs> How are you doing, Devil? How are you doing everybody? It's Kev Ashford here for another edition of The Man United Van Cam. I've been well and truly done over here, having a proper shit week as all Man United fans are dumped out of the Champions League. But it does beg the question, what difference would it have made of getting through in the... Oh, shit all over me here. Uh, what difference would it made of getting through anyway? Were we gonna win the goddamn thing? No, it would be nice to get through and all that. We've only got ourselves to blame. Manchester United, if we'd have done the business in Istanbul, we'd have been through. We'd have had, you know, a roller coaster of emotions to look forward to. But God forbid, man, if we'd have met the likes of Bayern Munich in the knockout stage, we'd have been totally embarrassed because this team cannot defend. Harry Maguire's having a nightmare at the minute. Lindelof, the two of them just give you no aspiration, inspiration, no confidence at the back. And you're like, fuck. And that was evident against RB Leipzig. Again, again, we in the PSG game, we need one point from two bastard games. Not hard, is it? Oh, it is for Manchester United, which shows the problems at United at the minute. And it's so painful to watch. On the flip side, man, if you're a glass half full man, you'll be saying, well, Kev, we win our game in hand. We're right up there in the mix in the Premier League, and we are. But you have to seriously ask yourself the question, come on, man, can we compete with Man City and Liverpool this season? Can we? Tottenham have improved. Chelsea are looking good. Are we any better off? And I love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Definitely give him till the end of the season. I always said it was a work in progress. He had to clear out the deadwood and stuff. But he has made some monumental fuck-ups recently. So he's not immune from criticism on Man United Van Camp. The decision to leave Fred on after the half-time against PSG ultimately cost us the game. The substitutions that he's made recently. RB Leipzig, the way we set up McTominay and Bastard Matic holding midfielders with 2 0 down after 13 minutes. Change it. We need to at least draw the game. We knew we needed to score one after they scored one. But no, we just sat back, invited him on. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't want to touch too much over all that shit because this weekend it's the big Manchester derby. Yeah. A nice easy one to go into this weekend. We're talking Bertie Magoo. Curly bastard Watts. Remember that dickhead off Coronation Street? Blue ketchup on the hot dog stands. That's what we're talking about. The biggest bastard floodlights in all the land. The widest pitch, the biggest pitch, the bluest shirt. Manchester City. We've got a huge game. And wouldn't it just be typical of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to get a result? Because every time this man is down on his knees, Manchester United seem to pull out a result. And that's what we'll all be hoping for. But again, some of you have probably made up your mind now and are thinking, we need to make a change. Solskjaer out and all that bollocks. That's your opinion. Fair enough. Fair enough. Give the man till the end of the season. Let's see where we are. If we don't make the Champions League, no trophies, we review it. But all this Pochettino bollocks still, he is still going to have the same problems. Any manager, Diego Simone, Allegri, all these names that are being bouted about, if they come in, we've still got the same board, the same owners, the same shit that we've been putting up for for years. So how will that change? Pochettino was sacked from Tottenham because he fell out with the owner. How is he going to get on with the Glazers and Ed Woodward? You do not get what you want working for these absolute parasites. Fifty. 
But with all that put to one side, it's time to kick off the show. Coming up this week, we are going to start with the big Van Cam debate. We get into that. We get to see a shot of the beautiful specimen that is John Valendingham in a Van Cam t-shirt stood there. We've got a bit of music over it. It's Black Sabbath. Of course it is. Paranoid. One of the finest songs of all time. Next in, we go for Cockstroker of the Week. Some absolute weapons out there. We honour them. Nobody wants the award, but you're going to get it. Well, if you don't receive, you know, I'm giving it you, yeah? Just sit down and shut up. We're going to then do Best of the Week. That's where we have a look at the funny things on the internet. We'll look at the Van Cam Manchester... What was that? <laughs> The Van Cam Fantasy Football League table, that's what we'll do. And we might have a look at a few of your comments. We'll see how we're doing for time at the minute. So sit back, pin back your ears, crack open the beers. It's Friday if you're watching live, and I appreciate it. Thank you to all the new subscribers and to the regulars of Man United Van Cam that have been watching me myself on the United stand. I am enjoying being back on it. I've noticed Valendingham. I think Bert Whistle was in the comment section. A lot of love for Van Cam and that, which is great. Go in there and promote it on their channel, yeah. Uh, and yeah, enough shite. We've got loads and we'll be ending talking briefly about the big Manchester derby. Right, let's do the big Van Cam debate. Nice one. The big Van Cam debate! Greetings to the big Van Cam debate. This is where we have a look at last week's poll. I give you the poll result of that. And then we fly into this week's question. And of course, your vote matters. Otherwise, there's absolutely no bastard reason for doing this kind of shit. Last week's question was looking at a thing that I stumbled across on the United stand being back on there. I couldn't believe how many people rated Bruno Fernandes above Paul Pogba. If we know about these Pogba fanboys and all this shit. They're, they're probably our kids and that. They don't, you know, they just look at the haircuts, the boots, you know, the social media shit and think that Pogba is the absolute best player on the planet and stuff. You look at what Bruno Fernandes has done for Man United. He's done more since last January coming in than Pogba's done in four years. And he doesn't just score penalties. He lifts Man United. He showed us that against West Ham when he come on at half-time. He lifts the team, which Pogba's never been able to do. Yeah, but he's won a World Cup. Yeah, all right. I don't remember him being the star of the show at the World Cup. Remember a player called Mbappe had a big say in that. He was just part of that team. Last week's question was, would you drop... <laughs> Bruno Fernandes for Paul Pogba and 95% yes 95% of the Man United Van Camelie as uh, David Conreen named it which is really good uh, the Van Camelie 95% yes I am repeating myself because I lost my trail of thought said no hell no not a chance you're dropping Bruno Fernandes for Paul Pogba which brings me beautifully into this week's question would you yes you start Paul Pogba in the Manchester Derby there's been loads of horse shit this week on the eve of a massive week for Manchester United prior to the RB Leipzig game where we could have gone through to the Champions League knockout but we didn't I know I'm not letting it drop I'm still pissed off about it Mina Raiola, that specky, four-eyed, fat fuck dog, comes out and drops the bomb. <sighs> My, you know, Pogba's career's over at Man United. He has to go and all that. We've heard it loads of times before, but not on the eve of a massive game like that and a Manchester derby coming up. And after him scoring an absolute worldie against West Ham, I did say when I was on the United stand as well, after the West Ham game, I wouldn't be surprised if he's just up in his game because January's coming and he might be looking for the exit door. I was shot down, man. They were laughing at me on it. And I said, I'm, it's just part of me just thinks that. And God, it was proved right, wasn't it? But he comes on against RB Leipzig. And this is another reason why I've lost, not faith, respect for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Do not even name that dickhead on the bench. If his agent comes out and says he's going and Pogba does not come back and say, no, R Raiola, you shouldn't have said that and that, silence speaks volumes. So he obviously agrees. He's worded this up with Raiola. 
he's come out and said what Pogba's feeling. We know that. We know exactly that. But for Solskjaer then to name him on the bench, just leave him out the squad. But then to bring him on with the 2-0 down, desperation. Don't be turning to him. But in all fairness, Paul Pogba did very well in that second half against Leipzig. So it does beg the question. And a lot of people last week's question, drop Bruno for Pogba. 95% said no. But have they proved that you can both play in the same team? And would you do it this weekend in the Manchester derby? Do we go for it? Play the two of them. Stop this defensive shit of McTominay and Matic. And mix it up. That's what we're doing. That's what we're talking about. So, would you start Paul Pogba in the Manchester derby? Click on the community tab. I don't know why I'm pointing up here because it is not there. You need to go to the YouTube channel, Man United Van Cam community tab. The poll will already be there for you. I'll put it up before Van Cam goes live and that. It's just what I do. I'm just so suffi sufficient. Is that right? Efficient. That's the bastard word I was looking for. Yeah. So, get on there. Vote. Get in the comment section and let me know what you think of that one. Reasons you would, reasons you wouldn't, reasons why you hate Paul Pogba and Mina Raiola. Why not? Let's get it going. But part of me again sort of looks and thinks, we're getting near to January, the transfer window's opening. You know, oh. is he, I know, but it's, I'm going down that route where I'm like, is he going to start stepping it up now because he's, you know, looking for his, his, his exit? But do you know what I mean? And as always, there is no sitting up on that fence. And I'll tell you why. I've got a friend of mine. He's called Terry the Tash. Beautiful moustache. Oh, yes, much better than mine, I don't mind saying. One time he couldn't make a decision. He sat up on the wall, the fence. That's what it was. It wasn't a wall. It was a fence. And he fell back off it because he couldn't make a decision. He hit his head. And since then, he's not been able to say his M's. So imagine that as a Man United fan. He has to call them Anchester United. Anchester, Anchester. You know, everyone's in the crowd going, who's this Tash face, Bellend? It's Terry the Tash. That's who it is. And he couldn't make a decision, sat on the fence, fell off it, and now he can't say his M's. It could happen to you if you don't make a decision. So be wise and do it. Thank you, please. <laughs> Big yes, Steve. He calls his mum um. <laughs> right, everybody, that was your dose of the big Van Cam debate. Please make sure that you vote on that and make sure you get comments flying in the flying uh, the flying section. In yeah, the comments section. Uh, lockdown. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've had enough, man. I'm not lying. I'm getting to the stage now where if Michael Barrymore rang and said, "All right." I'd be like, all right, you know, if he invited me around to a pool party, I think I'd just try and take my chances and just go for it. Just need to get out there and get doing things, you know. Hopefully, we can all have a great Christmas. Next up, Cockstroker of the Week. Loads of people love this section because we like to honour and look at people that are just more balanced, mm, Jesus, than what we are. You know, it makes us feel good about ourselves. We might do stupid things, but at least we can always look down on other people and go, well, I might be a knobhead, but they are serious knobheads. Yeah. Just let's cut straight to it, man. Cockstroker of the week. Cockstroker of the week. <laughs> All right. This is Cockstroker of the week we've got seven nominations this week for the award that absolutely nobody wants to be stuck with but it's my duty to give you the nominations countdown from seven down to one this week so without further ado number seven we've got an arsenal fan he's called at afc max nine and he tweeted out thomas Partey is the best number 18 in the premier league a picture of thomas Partey's shirt and a picture of Yes, the great, legendary Bruno Fernandes. <laughs> How can you even compare them? Dropping in at number six, it's a United fan on Twitter. It's at United 
Trey. Following all this news about Raiola saying that Paul Pogba's time's up at Manchester United, at United Trey took to Twitter, picture of Paul Pogba tapping his chest and the words, we failed you. And this is what is wrong with United's fan base. Some of these absolute fucktards. Honestly, man, we failed Paul Pogba. We paid 90 bastard million for him. He has come in and in four years, what has the man done? Consecutive performances, does he ever string them together? No, oh, but we need to put players around him that suit the way that Pogba plays, bollocks. If he was that good, he would stand out at United and we'd all go, do you know what? He is absolutely shit hot and he's better than any of our players. It's as simple as that. Number five goes to the official Crumlin Shopping Centre, wherever the fuck that is. But anyway, we had the sad news uh, last week that Maradona died, an absolute legend icon of the game. A lot of fans will say that Maradona was the greatest. This debate will always rage on. It's what rage on. It's what makes football interesting. We've all got different opinions. Some will say Pele best, Messi, Ronaldo even, you know, up to date. But anyway, on the sad news that Maradona had passed away, uh, official Crumlin Shopping Centre took to social media, like a lot of these dickheads do, as if they knew him. Uh, but the, the, the bad problem with this one was they said, lost for words, rest in peace. And copied a picture of Madonna. Fucking idiots. Number four goes to Man United viewing Van Cam regular, really good friend of the show. It's Saeed uh, at realist underscore 187 on the news of Paul Pogba coming out. Of course, Saeed was going to take to Twitter. Was he going to vent his anger and say, Pogba, do you just do one, dickhead? No. I ain't even condoning what has come out today. It's wrong timing and Pogba and his agent have done wrong before a massive game. However, people need to realise the structure of the football club is all wrong. If we had a director of football, this situation would not be happening. Fact. Now, the fact that he opens up with, I ain't even condoning what has come out today and then says, however, people need to realise you're contradicting yourself, man. You are contradicting yourself and you are actually saying that if we had a director of football, this would not have come out, Paul Pogba. Mina Raiola, he didn't even give a fuck if there's a director of football there. Mina Raiola is a businessman. He is not gonna bow down to a director of football. So it absolutely makes no sense at all that, my friend. Number three goes to Mr. Aaron United on Twitter. Now this is a caucus, so prepare yourself. Everyone is praising Bruno now. And rightly so. Cool. But I guarantee you that when Paul Pogba is gone, Bruno will be the new Pogba. <laughs> Let that sink in for a minute. He'll be frustrated that apart from Donny, there's no quality in midfield. And if we don't win a trophy in the next two seasons, Bruno will not hesitate to leave. Bruno will be the new Pogba. Let it sink in. And number two goes to the man of the moment, Mr. Paul Pogba. So Raiola comes out, says that his client wants to leave on the eve of a massive game, but we got knocked out of the Champions League, so it doesn't matter anymore. What's he going to come out with? Everybody's searching social media. Is he going to come out and quash? You know, is it a rumour that Raiola said this? Is he going to come out and say he doesn't want to leave United? We're all waiting. What does he come out with on the Instagram? And this is one thing that really does me tits in about Paul Pogba and people say he's allowed to, so I don't mind man, if he's doing it in the red shirt on the pitch, sweet. What does he come out with on the eve of this game and the fact that he's, he's whatever he is, that fat four-eyed fucking freak, Raiola, what does he come out with? He runs a poll on Instagram and says who has the, the coolest haircut, him or Tellez? day football fuckery and number one yes you guessed it it is the fat four-eyed fuck dog himself Mina Raiola could he have timed it any worse for Manchester United I'm certainly not using it as an excuse that United have gone out the Champions League but the timing was awful and for me Pogba had enough mate just do one usually in a situation like this I remember Fellaini and I used to, you know, laugh and say, I'd drive him to the airport if he wants to go. I wouldn't even give the satisfaction of driving Paul Pogba there. Do you know what I'd do? 
I'd say, do you want to go? If we can find a club for you. Do you know what I mean? I can't see Real Madrid wanting him. Barcelona, PSG. I don't know. Maybe they will want him. But if they do want him, do you know what I'd make him do? I'd say you can go. But you're going to crawl on your hands and bastard knees all the way to Manchester Airport, sunshine. And cheerio. Nonsense. Never heard so much rubbish in my life. Mm. Cockstroker of the week. A well-deserved award that nobody wants, but Mina Raiola, put that in your pipe and smoke it, sunshine. Or in your, probably end up eating it. God, shine. Anyway, next, don't go anywhere. Stay there. Chillax. Have another beer, whatever you're into. We're going to do best of the week. Let's have a look at some of the funnier sides of the internet. It's best of the week. Best of the week is coming and everybody's running. Okay, so we've got six for best of the week this week. I don't even know why I'm laughing, but this, the first one to kick us off, number six, it's one of the Paddy jokes. Of course it is, why not? Paddy is on a new beach in Spain, out of manners, and to prevent sunburn, he keeps a hat over his privates. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, a woman walks past, sniggering, and says, if you were a gentleman, you'd lift your hat. Paddy replies, if you weren't so fucking ugly, it would lift itself. <laughs> Did you get it? Because it's the hat over the private part, if it, it was ex you get it, yeah, of course you do. Number five is this one that surfaced on Facebook. A uh, picture of Mike Tyson next to Katie Price, which is strange in its own way. But then the wording went, who has dropped more boxes? Mike Tyson or Katie Price? You get it. He was a boxer and she's obviously dropped a load of boxers. Number four, some bloke had bought a new 65-inch TV and he wanted to give you the idea of the size of the box, the telly itself. So he said, look at the size of my new TV compared to my dishwasher. <laughs> you get, uh, probably a bit sexist that actually, because it's kind of saying that she, yeah, she's the dishwasher. Still not big TV though. Number three sensational work this one from the boys i'm just calling them the boys because it drops it in as if i know them i don't uh when the pubs are closed and the only place serving is the airport you know where i'm going with this one so you book a 9.99 euro flight that you have no intention of getting on to go for beers with the lads down there for dancing that oh that is just sensational work and do you know what a mate of mine before this actually come out suggested this and i was like no nah, because I knew what would happen. We'd end up getting on the flight and ending up in Riga or some mad place, Russia, somewhere really, really moody and mental. But great work there. You pay 9 99 for a flight that you have no intention of getting on and you're able to sit at the bar and have pints with your mates. Number two, when we're heading back to Facebook, we had one of them things. Three teams with swear words in their name. Yes, the first one that springs to mind, of course, is Arsenal. Arse. The second one is Scumthorpe. That's pretty much self-explanatory. See you next Tuesday. And Liverpool, they've got a swear word in their name. And you're probably racking your brains now trying to break it down. Fucking bin dipping. See you next Tuesdays. Number one goes to Danny Armstrong. <laughs> I know. Yeah, well, Danny Armstrong took to Twitter. We had a little bit of an argument. We had Peter Shilton posted a picture of him and his wife, who looks like a fine bit of stuff. Uh, he said, happy birthday to my adorable wife. To me, she's the most beautiful lady I've ever seen with an inner strength of steel and a heart of pure gold. She's my world. And this is where it gets interesting because we get people commenting. Of course you are. You open yourself up, you put it out there. People are going to comment. Skins at Skins THFC said, wish you were punching this high when Maradona was next to you. Ooh, it's a low blow. Peter Shilton, he's going to defend himself. He comes out and he said, I think you will find he cheated, meaning Maradona cheated because he punched the ball into the net. Well, that's not where the fun stops because this is where Danny Armstrong waited and pounced like a lion on a gazelle with one leg. Danny Armstrong throws in. You did too, to be fair. That's why she's your second wife. Oh, it's a low blow. It's killing me. It really is. That's best of the week top work 
from Danny Armstrong. Best of the week is over, my granny drives a rover. Danny Armstrong, you savage. There's best of the week. Let's have a quick look at the Man United Van Camp Fantasy League table and this will be a quick look. Okay, so a brief look at the Man United Van Camp Fantasy League table. Bjorn Oli Lundberg, what an absolute corker of a week. He's rocking top spot. Let's see his team there. You dirty bastard. He's got Salah as his captain. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, he's also got Jota in there. You only got him a point, Fernandez son. Yeah, absolute corker of a week there. Let's just go back to that. Where is Dave Bertwistle after giving it the big one the other week? He's dropped down to seventh, but he's still in the mix. He's more in the mix than what Kev is because Kev is in 53rd place. Certainly not happy about that, but the wooden spoon at the minute, who could claim that? Marco File is still at the bottom. Wayne Frankos. Frankos. All right, Frankos. Yeah, he's, you know, in contention for it as well. That's your dose of the Man United Van Camp Fantasy League table. Alrighty then, we're going to end with your comments. Not done this for a while, but I'm going to take them this week to make it nice and easy for myself from YouTube. So make sure you drop, drop in a comment in the, the, the comment section. That's where you drop them in, isn't it? Jesus Christ, what is wrong with me, man? Uh, loads of great interaction. A lot of them were going off the drop Bruno for Pogba debate that we had last week. Uh, Adam, MUFC1980, said, Love the show. Great to see you on the United Stand too. Thanks very much. And nice one for watching. Jay Daly, uh, Van Cam regular and legend, the muscle man himself, uh, said, Drop Bruno for Jogba. Hold my wine while I smack someone in the head. And we do not condone violence here on Van Campbell. When it's something to do with Paul Pogba, yeah, crack on and do that shit, man. Jenny Hardman said, I drop Pogba off a cliff before dropping Pogba. It's harsh, but she's right. Paul Linton said, absolutely hilarious. When you said Spice Girls nearly fell off my chair. Also, when you called us all a tit lickers. Oh, I did call you all tit lickers. Crack me up. Thanks, Kev. Cheer me up all the time, pal. Hope you're well. Hope everybody's well because we're all going through this difficult time and that we need a laugh, don't we? A lot of people on YouTube, far too serious, man. I try to just sprinkle a bit of laughter in there. If you find it funny, that's great. If you don't, then do one, dickhead. Tim Kelleher said, love your show more than all the channels, Kev. Way better than the United Stand. Keep it up, lad. Thank you very much. And our very own Wivenshaw Raver, David Conrain said, He's on record as saying that Cavani will produce some magical moments for United. So suck on that, FIFA Tactics Brigade, all the out bell sniffers. Probably a dig at Saeed there, but uh, regards, Raver. Rivage your red, sorry. Just burnt there. That's the thing about Cavani at the minute. United are all, almost playing with a false number nine without even Im implementing that tactic in the game. We've just not got a number nine. And when Cavani's fit, he is that. We missed him against Leipzig. He could make a huge difference. Just holding the ball up. Hopefully he's fit for the derby, but we'll have to see. Sorry about that. You didn't need to see me having a drink of my cappuccino. Uh, David Conry, yeah, he's already spoken. The man, Disco Stu Madrid, said, Yeah, so Kev, I follow you on Insta. That's short for Instagram if you're not down with the kids. Subscribed on YouTube, but plenty of fish is a dating app, right? It is. Uh, sorry, bro. Good looking guy and all that, but my preference, not my preference. However, told the missus to hit you up. What the fuck does that mean? If she ever cheated on me, there's hell to pay. But if she cheats on me with either Eric Cantona or Kev from Van Camp, then yeah, totally fine. Same as any other decent Man United fan. I think I've just been given the keys to the motor there by the sounds of it. I uh, wonder how she rides. Yeah, that's your comments. Next week, I will be putting together Man United Van Cam. I think that will be the final one of 2020. What a year it has been. Have a pair of them and another pair. Two for the price of one. You can't beat it. But 2020, eh? And at the weekend, Manchester United against Manchester City. The club steeped in history, Man City. No, just steeped in fucking filthy, richy gold bars and money and shit houses. Yeah, and like I said earlier, curly walks, blue ketchup, biggest floodlights in the land, the biggest stand, the biggest stadium, all this bollocks, all these myths. Lee Bradbury, remember him? 
Oh, just there's so much to go on about Bertie Magoo and all that, but yeah, I'm fishing. Been all Man City fans watching this, so I'll be safe anyway. But what I will say is that Manchester City probably will be heavy favourites for this game, and I am basing that solely on the fact that there will be no fans inside the ground. Oh! Yeah, of course, man. They've got a massive advantage because they play in front of no one every week. So now they've got a huge advantage at Old Trafford. Enjoy yourself. Thanks very much for watching if you managed to last the full half an hour or whatever it's been. It's always a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, and a big thanks to today's show sponsor. That's Dan's Dildos. You can get onto www.dansdildos.com. And if you enter the promo code VANCAM, you'll get eight inches for the price of six. So Kev's helping you out. Dan's Dildos has slipped me a tenner. So that helps me out. Got me a McDonald's breakfast this morning and I've got change left for something to get later on. But yeah, Dan's Dildos. I mean, my wife personally says it's not the size of the boat. It's the motion in the ocean. And I believe that. But I mean, you might be struck for a Christmas present for your gran. I've just fired that out there now and you're like... <laughs> That's Maureen sorted. Sort her out. She sort herself out, won't she? Where's the hard hat? Where's it gone? Lost my trailer port. Right, it's the big one at the weekend. Drink in moderation, work hard, be nice to people. I'm for United at the weekend. Honestly, lads, if you can't get up for this one, we might as well just pack up and just end it. End Man United. Because these are the games that you need to turn up to. Not just Bruno Fernandes on his own. We need Harry Maguire to be on form. Lindelof. Hopefully Fred comes back in at the team. There's just so many players. But for Christ's sake, do not start that virus toxicity. The twat, Paul Pogba. He's done at United. Just get rid of him in January. Stick him in the under-12s. About his level and for United at the weekend come on United if you come from Manchester you're sure to be a blue Most and Collier's Salford ankles too and if you think that this is true you're nothing but a fool because in this town of Manchester man United rule Tra -la -la -la. we all they say hey, have a good one I said you love Thanks very much for watching the video. You can also follow me on these other social media platforms. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, plenty of fish. Oh yeah. Thanks to everybody who gets involved. Comments, likes, shares, subscribes. Subscribing is the main thing. It costs you nothing. And why wouldn't you want to do it? This is Man United Van Camp.